Hey everyone, welcome back to another YouTube video. If you don't know me, my name is Abdul. I'm a junior doctor in London, the co-founder of Scrubbed In and an NHS clinical entrepreneur. This video is very specific to a handful of people. And as you can tell from the title, it's a video explaining how I felt and my situation after I got rejected from my first choice deanery as a final year medical student at King's College London. And I know that a lot of medical students who have accepted and been granted their top choice in terms of where they're gonna work as soon as they graduate medical school. And a lot of them are in the major big cities in the UK. But for me, it was slightly different. And I'll tell you what happened. We just came back from our electives, finished all our medical exams. We all found out that we passed exams and we're gonna be doctors in the summer. And the night of our allocations, when you kind of go on a platform called Oreo and you see where you are allocated for your posting as a junior doctor, you kind of get a good feel. And obviously I thought, I smashed exams, I've done so well, I'm gonna be in London. Because that's where my friends and family are, it's where I've been born, brought up, and it's where I studied medicine. But guess what happened? I opened up the portal, and I saw something I thought I would never see. I saw I was allocated in the Midlands. And it said South Midlands. And I thought South Thames, right? I thought it was South London, and guess what I did? I called Amza, I was like, mate, you know, I'm gonna be in London, I'm gonna be in the South Thames, we're gonna be part of the King's Hospital. And then he told me, mate, you absolutely flopped. What happened was, I was in the Midlands, the South region part of the Midlands, and I was shocked. So what did I do? I closed my computer, my laptop screen, and I went to sleep. I could not, could not accept the fact that I had hopes and dreams of being in London, that now I had to move away, a hundred miles away from London. It took me a few days to finally acknowledge and accept the fact that I had been placed in a deanery that was seventh on my choice. So there are lots of cities and a lot of places before the deanery I got allocated and it took me a while. At one point I wanted to appeal. I wanted to appeal and kind of explain to them, look, I need to be in London, it's where I am, it's where I'm based. I've had my whole life there, I can't bear to move out. And a lot of anxiety creeped in, a lot of issues and worries and concerns. And one of them was, will I be a good doctor if I'm working in a city outside of London? I was concerned that the training I would have in a hospital outside of London may not be as good as my peers and my colleagues who all ended up staying in London. I was completely worried. I was worried, how would I fit in? I've never lived out other than on clinical placements. Even then it was with friends. I thought, how am I gonna live out for two years? Would I get through it? However, let me tell you what happened. Those two years were probably some of the best parts of my training so far, and I loved it. And it allowed me to learn so much more about myself, to finally become independent, as I finally got the opportunity to live out with friends that I happened to go to med school with. It allowed me to take the most of opportunities that I believe were only available to me because I was in this region, in these type of hospitals, as to London. And an example is that, during the time I was really keen and an advocate of pursuing surgical training. I really wanted to become a surgeon. And guess what? In the hospital, in the Midlands, there were days when I'm going home while doing a surgical job, the consultant used to grab me by the collar and be like, we need your help. We need you to help us do this hernia repair or some sort of operation. And when I compared my experiencing with those that were doing a surgical job as an F1, at the same time as me in a big fancy London hospital, they were so busy with the day-to-day -day job, they did not have the opportunity to go into theatres and assist, let alone be a first assist. There are multiple, multiple surgeries that I was able to assist just with me and the consultant or me and a senior registrar. And I loved it. It allowed me to learn a lot more surgical procedures and a lot more about medicine than I would have otherwise felt. Not to say that going to a London hospital is bad for you, it just worked in my favour. The key thing and the key message I want to say is, Despite you not getting your first choice deanery, it does not make you less of a doctor. You can be anywhere in the country and it's what you make out of your training that really defines you as a doctor. And you can always come back and work in a big city like London. I used to come back every so often. I used to come back on the weekends, still maintain a social life, still visit friends and family. And something I realized, and it took me a while to understand is, we can plot and plan and kind of pinpoint the rest of our career, where we end up, where we want to do. But if we are rigid and fixated on that pathway and something goes against us or doesn't come in our way, it can take a toll on us. And it's important we embrace our journey. We don't compare ourselves to others. Because if I was stuck in that mindset of, I need to be in London, I need to train in London, the rest of my career needs to be in London, it would have been two years of the most awful time in my training and I would just, just been kicking myself and not making the most of the opportunity. So this is just a message to those people 
who never got their allocations or dinner they wanted, it does get better. Those two years will fly by. Make the most of your training and it may be a blessing in disguise. You're gonna meet so many lovely people. You're gonna make lifelong friends. And if you happen to be in a small DGH in the countryside and you wanna be a surgeon, make the most of this opportunity. These are the places where you can get your hands stuck in quite literally. You can learn as much as you can compared to someone in London. So my message is don't worry too much. Don't feel anxious. I was exactly where you are. I embraced it and made the most of my F1, F2 journey. And I moved back to London and practiced as a junior doctor here. So don't worry, life does get better and there is always light at the end of the tunnel. I hope that makes a difference to some people. And if you do still have questions, make sure you reach out to us. We're more than happy to help.